Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to day two of the Reading Rush. Last night I did not do any more reading when I wrapped up the vlog. That is the last things that I read, which was Wrapping Up Legion by Brandon Sanderson. So today I'm still reading the same two books. I'm hoping to finish both of them, but I am going to see The Lion King this evening at 7.30. We will be going out and getting food and then going to the cinema. So I'm not sure how much that I'm gonna get read because I'm going to come home from work, get some makeup on, make myself look presentable, and then we are going out to the cinema. I went to sleep at like 2 a.m. Last night I finished sorting out the vlog and everything at about 12.30 and then I got ready to get into bed and Curtis was out and he came home at 1.30. I went to bed quite late, I'm half asleep at the minute. Honestly, I don't have any makeup on or anything because I just couldn't be bothered <laughs> essentially. So those are my plans for today. I'm going to work. I'm going to try and finish those two books. I will carry on listening to My Sister the Serial Killer on audio. I do also want to catch up on quite a few people's videos because there's people like Gav, Jade, Cody who've all put their weekly reading vlogs up yesterday that I would like to catch up on because we are also going to have a ton of day one of the Reading Rush vlogs that I'm going to have to catch up on as well. But at the same time I do want to finish that audiobook and then the emperor's soul i'm gonna pick that up in a minute and start that novella so i would like to finish both of those today if i don't i will definitely finish them tomorrow but that will put me a little bit behind already for the reading rush so those are my plans for the day and i will come back and check in with you later and let you know how i'm doing Hello friends and welcome back to the beginning of a new weekly vlog. You may be wondering why I'm dressed like this, you might not be. So I was just wondering if you could tell that it was Curtis that did the laundry this weekend because he did the laundry and he paired up all of the socks and these, these are not a pair of socks. These are two different pairs of socks. Good afternoon slash evening. Guys, it is around 5 p.m. now. I'm not sure like what the cutoff point for afternoon is where we move into evening, but it's summer, so it's, it's daytime all the time, essentially. You may get a little bit of outdoor noise because I've just opened the window to let a bit of a breeze in because I'm sweating and sorry that I'm messing with my hair, but I have literally just put dry shampoo in. So it's, it's set in now and I need to sort of pull it into some sort of style. So I got home from work, I've just had a shower, I've put my makeup on, ready to go to the cinema. I said yesterday, I think I said this morning as well, oh, we are going to see The Lion King tonight. But I haven't done much vlogging yet today, and I also have something to tell you. But I have finished my first book for The Reading Rush, and that is My Sister, The Serial Killer by Oyinkan Braithwaite. I gave this four stars. I'm not gonna give you a synopsis of this here. I do not want another 22 minute vlog like I'm aiming for between 10 and 15 minutes. Watch this be 20 minutes again, I know, I know. So if you do want a synopsis of this book, I will put a link to yesterday's vlog up here where I went into it in detail. I did really enjoy this I give it four stars but I was not satisfied by the ending I put this into my spreadsheet and I did find it quite hard to classify genre wise because obviously it is about a woman whose sister is a serial killer so we definitely have thriller aspects in here but it is also very much a slice of life I don't want to fully categorize it as like a slice of life literary fiction type of book because there is a plot line like it starts with her sister killing her third boyfriend that she's murdered and the overall plot is that her sister is interested in a guy that the main character likes and so the main character is torn between keeping her sister out of prison and keeping her sister safe and also protecting this man who is her friend and who she is attracted to so it does have a plot line but this is very much less about her sister being a serial killer and thriller aspects as it is about the relationship 
relationship between the two sisters and the history and sort of the familial situation. So it's a little bit of both. I did categorise it as a thriller in the end, but this is not like a traditional thriller. It very much is more like a slice of life kind of book, but it does have enough plot that I was kind of satisfied with it, although I didn't like the ending. The ending was just meh. I'm just not a fan of the ending, but I gave it four stars anyway. I will also recommend the audiobook for this. You guys know if you are here regularly, I'm very picky about audiobooks. I tend to only want to listen to an audiobook if you can gain something that you can't gain from reading it physically. I listened to the entirety of this on audiobook. The audiobook is available on script, and I do think that it was a really good audiobook. Oyinkin Braithwaite is a British Nigerian author, and the narrator for this book is a British Nigerian. I think she's actually the CEO of a club company or something like that but she is British Nigerian. I feel like that really added to my enjoyment of this because we had a lot of accents and things in here. I thought that the voices for each of the characters was absolutely amazing and I feel like there were some Nigerian slang or cultural mannerisms. I want to say like honorifics as well that I don't think I would have necessarily have picked up on and been able to understand as easily if I had read this physically as opposed to listened to the audiobook. So would recommend the audiobook for this. It's only four and a half hours, even though it took me two work days to listen to it. For some reason, I kept getting interrupted. But if you are thinking of reading this, then I can definitely recommend the audiobook. So I know this morning I said that I was going to be picking up The Emperor's Soul in the car and reading that, but I actually found out after I'd filmed that vlog clip that the book that I put in my bag, I did take this with me because I like to be able to see what page I'm up to when I'm listening to audiobooks, but the book that I put in my bag instead of The Emperor's Soul was actually Stardust, so I haven't read any of this yet today. Now we have a I think it's 35 to 45 minute drive to where we're going for food and also the cinema. So I may take this with me. I'm torn now because my ideal was to finish both of these today and I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this now because obviously I'm going to be wrapped up at the cinema for quite some time and then as soon as I get home I have to edit all of this vlog. So I'm not sure whether to take this with me or whether to take a manga and just rearrange my location for the all in one spot challenge. But I think I'll take this with me because if Emperor's Soul is anything like Legion, I should be able to read it pretty quickly. I mean, the font isn't particularly small in this book. If I do read a manga today, while I will have hit the goal of finishing a book for like each day of the readathon kind of thing, I'll be just making it harder for myself later on in the week. So it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. But we'll see which one I take. But at the minute, I think I'll take the Emperor's Soul. I'll probably take both and just see what happens. In terms of the readathon and the challenges, this one was to fulfill the challenge to read an author's first book. So that challenge is now done. I can't remember if it'll double up for anything. I don't think this one would double up for anything. And then this one is to read a book with purple on the cover. Hoping to have this done tonight, but like I said, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go now. I think we're leaving in around 10 to 15 minutes. I need to throw a bag together of all of my things. I will obviously take some clips while I'm out and then my boyfriend and I may just let you know what we thought of The Lion King overall when we're done. We'll see what's happening. I am like so behind on watching videos at the minute. I realized today, like last year, it was a lot. There were a lot of people and I don't know if I subscribe to more people because I think a lot of the people that I subscribed to last year are now inactive even though I still subscribe to them. But there are a lot of vlogs. There are so many more vlogs to watch this year than there were last year and my subscription box is bulging. It is bulging and I am still watching my friend's weekly vlogs that they put up yesterday. So at some point I'm gonna have to catch up on YouTube. I have like Chelsea's daily vlogs to watch, Cody's daily vlogging, Rachel's daily vlogging. As you saw, I just watched a little bit of Cody's weekly vlog, the only weekly vlog that I've actually watched so far because I've been listening to an audiobook at work instead of watching videos is Jade's from JD Ray Reads. So I still have Gavs and Rachel's to watch. And yeah, it's just a lot of content. Oh my God, we've got Natasha's daily vlogs, Lexi's daily vlogging. I. There's a whole lot of content. I think I already said that I was gonna go and then didn't go, but I'm actually going to go now and I'll check in with you at some point before the end of the day. Okay guys, so we have just had food, which means that it is go time. It's time to go to the cinema and see the live action, The Lion King. I'm gonna cry and I wish I could film in the cinema because I am gonna seriously, seriously sob. I think I've cried at 
every Disney live action remake apart from Beauty and the Beast. I cried at the Jungle Book, I cried at Dumbo, I cried at, what else have we seen? Aladdin, I cried in Aladdin. I think there was another one, Is, hasn't there been a really emotional one that I cried just because it was real? What have we been to see this year? I'm sure there's been another one. I don't remember, but The Lion King is one of my favorite Disney movies, if not my favorite Disney movie. Beauty and the Beast is my favorite for nostalgic reasons because my great granddad had a VHS that I used to watch every single time I was at his house. And I also like Tangled, that's my favorite of the newer Disney films. But The Lion King is my favorite because I like it. So it's not, well, it is for nostalgic reasons because I was a kid when it was released. I was one when it was released, but for reasons that nobody made me watch, Watch it and it's not like I don't associate it with a particular person or anything I just really like The Lion King so there is gonna be a lot of crying because I also cry at Disney live actions just because I think it makes them seem a lot more real like it's it's almost like your childhood coming to life so I cry at that I cry because it's just visually stunning and then obviously The Lion King is really sad so we're gonna go <laughs> see The Lion King now are you excited look at your Simba top yeah. show me nipples like that. Yeah. So we're gonna go see Lion King and um, I'll let you know what I think when I've seen it. Hey guys, so I'm back from the cinema. I did try and update you in the car on the way back, but because it's getting dark out, or it was getting dark out, my camera wasn't focusing very well. So I had to wait until I got back. I'm so desperate to put my pajamas on and begin editing this vlog because it is sometime after 10 now, maybe quarter past, half past, sometime around there. I don't have my phone with me at the minute. So the Lion King live action remake, it was good. I enjoyed it. I started crying before Simba was even baptized. So that early on in the film, and I'm not even talking like tearing up, I'm talking about like actual tears streaming. And I cried through at least the first half of the film until long after Mufasa stuff. Um, I don't want to give spoilers. I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows what happens in The Lion King, but still I won't spoil it in case you don't. So I cried through most of it. The cinematography is absolutely stunning. There was a dodgy shot, like the bit where the lightning strikes the tree and sets everything on fire. That shot was a little bit dodgy, I can't lie. And there are a few lines of dialogue that didn't seem to hit too hard because I, I don't know whether it was the way the dialogue was was delivered or whether it's because it's like live action animals talking. That's the weirdest thing about it. It reminds me of the 90s Disney film. What are they called? Is it not Homeward Bound? Is it? Is it Homeward Bound? The movie with the two dogs and a cat and they get lost and they're trying to find the way home and it's just like a narrator. I kept thinking about things like that while I was watching it but it is a very good movie. It is very emotional. The way that I approach live action Disney movies is that I don't compare them and I don't say like oh the animated one's better. I have them as two separate things because like I said earlier to me it is more about like your childhood coming to life and I find them so emotional because it is like a piece of your childhood that is very obviously like cartoon and fictionalized becoming a real thing and as somebody who is a bit of a daydreamer and obviously loves to read books and ingest stories it is like finding out that fairy tales are real it's that kind of feeling for me which it's sappy and whatever but that's how i feel about the live action remake so i don't really critically rate them i understand why some people won't love the lion king one it's not the best i would say of the ones that i've seen i didn't like dumbo very much and the jungle book was pretty good it was pretty good but yeah the lion king isn't the best of all of the remakes that we've had so far over the last couple of years but i don't think it's bad i don't think it's bad at all and yeah i just go into them thinking about them and as a way to experience a story I already love in a slightly different format but still staying true to the original because it's Disney. What I will say though, and I've, I've ruined a lot of people's childhoods on Twitter today, is that as an adult, you know, you go into some movies and you realise some things. And today I realised that Nala and Simba are probably related because in A Lion Pride in the Wild you only have one to three males. I think they normally have a maximum of three males. But in The Lion King, there is only Scar and Mufasa and Scar is not in the pride. So it's likely that Mufasa is both the father of Simba and Nala. And while it's never stated on screen, 
there are no other male lions in the pride. And I think that male cubs are normally chased away when they reach sexual maturity. So it is unlikely that there would have been another male to be Nala's dad. So uh, I've ruined my own childhood today and um, everybody else's as well. But you know, there's just some things that you realize when you're an adult that you don't realize when you're three or four. As for reading, I've read about two pages. I've not done very well with Empress so I'm probably not gonna read anything else tonight. I don't know what I'm going to be reading tomorrow. I have one audiobook left of my TBR and that is for Catwoman, but that is the book on my TBR that I would least like to listen to via audiobook. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do tomorrow. I'm going to the gym tomorrow. That is all of my plans really, but I'll tell you tomorrow what I'm reading. I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Right now, I just need to get this vlog edited. So my small booktuber shout out of the day, let me move over here so I can fit an icon in. But my small booktuber shout out is going to be Jade from Jaded Reader. Now Jade makes some absolutely excellent content. I think that she is very engaging when she speaks. Jade to me is a very passionate booktuber and she has a few interests that aren't I, would, I don't want to say they're not popular on booktube but they are things I would go to her specifically for because I know that she is interested in them or knowledgeable about them. She is doing, I'm not sure exactly what degree she has just completed at college but I do know that it is relating to Japanese and Japanese culture and she did like a whole module on manga and then she made this absolutely amazing manga video that not only gave manga recommendations for beginners but also detailed the different types of manga so if you are unsure about where to start with manga if, or if you are unsure what the different types mean jade went through all of that in one video she also did an awesome recommendations video for the book junkie trials that contained a whole ton of books that feature dragons because she really likes dragons she also has like I'm gonna call them performing cats because if you watch the intro to one of her videos you will see what I mean like go do that right now go and watch an intro to one of Jade's videos because I don't I don't know how she does it my cats are wild and if I go near them they run away but Jade's cats Jade's cats do whatever she wants them to so that girl is honestly magic and of course I would appreciate it if you would go and check her out like I said she's very passionate and she's very knowledgeable about quite a few topics and she likes to make videos about the things that she loves and she also does occasionally do reading vlogs and I love her reading vlogs as well. So that is it for today's vlog. I am worried now that we're going to end up with a 20 minute vlog again because I really don't want to stay up and edit it but I have to. So I'm going to keep this little outro brief. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful reading rush. Please let me know how your reading rush is going so far and I will be back at it again tomorrow. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go when nobody knows. With guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.